Hey guys, so on your screen right now you'll see an image of a cannon. This is a cannon I made during our game jam the other week. And I'm going to be going over how we could bake some vert colour ID map information into this so we can use it in Substance Painter. Um, so we'll just jump into Max now, fade this image out. Ooh, edgy editing. Um, no, but seriously, we've got um, a little bit to get through. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um, this is the model. Um, there's actually two models. We've got our low and our high. Um, just in there, just hit both of them. So if we just push the high out, there it is. And there's the low there, just below it. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a high poly vert colour bake. And the difference there is if you've got a high poly model like floating geometry, etc., you want to be applying your vert colours onto that mesh, onto your high poly mesh. And if you're baking your low poly, so you're just doing a, you actually haven't created a secondary mesh, you're just trying to create IDs for your low poly, then you would apply that low poly um, vert data. Uh, you would apply the vert color data onto the low poly. That'll become clear though. But for this example, it's important to know that we have two meshes. We have our low, we have our high. The pivot points are in the same place. Just move that back. Um, our high poly has a little bit more detail around here, not much though, um, and in this case we also have the rope removed on the high poly. Um, I'm going to remove the rope on the low poly as well, and um, that's just because that's a separate ID and that's just going to cause some confusion with the baker. Now you can just set up your material and substance to export. You see here we've got um, Matt 01 and then that's got the cannon and the rope, but for this most of you guys will be using one ID so we'll just use this and we will call this. Canon, um, oops, Canon, that was better. Just assign that material. Um, so we've got one ID. So if we go onto our um, low poly model here, we have one ID. We wouldn't. We know we have one ID because if this was set to two, and then we selected everything, um, there wouldn't be a number here. Whereas now, when we click off it, you see it has a one in there, so we know everything's set to ID one. Hopping on unwrap, just have a little quick look, make sure everything's looking at spick and span. Um, it sure is. I've offset some of the UVs one tiles, so the bake ignores this data. If you want more information on that, um, I could do another tutorial. For now, we're just talking about setting up vert colours for ID maps. This is more about AO and normal math baking this. Um, so yeah, that's set up nicely. Uh, and yeah, the next thing to do is just to centre this out hide it and then we'll uh, have a look at our high poly model um, just like that. so this is what we're trying to go for here something like this um, now if you missed that I just right clicked object properties the channel display take that and then um, but what you guys will probably come across um, on your models will be what if we look at our high our low poly blur we hide our high and we look at our low, you will see it's just white. Um, it's always better to kind of, there's no nice way of going about this actually, um, probably setting the entire thing to be sort of like a gray. And then you can kind of see your, um, see what you're doing a bit better. Because if it's like white, it kind of hides the wireframe. So that's a nice little tip, just set it to grey and then you can um, you can see your wireframe then so you know what you're selecting. Um, but yeah, um, what we'll do is we'll just um, unhide all, we'll hide that and we will duplicate this and we will do, we will recreate this again. So if we just go on here and we just set our colour to be white, that's going to undo all that data, hit OK. And we're just going to recreate that ID map there. So it's important to remember what you want to be each material. So for example, I want this to be steel or whatever this metal is. Um, and I'm going to set this to red. So I'm just doing that by selecting the element and then changing it to whatever color I want. Now this is interesting actually, because if you set this color and then you come down here and I go, oh, I want to do pink again well you'll never get this pink exactly right um, you can change your tolerance in substance painter 
but it's much much easier if you just select everything that you want to be um, in our case bronze armor that's the smart material we're going to be using for this um, let's grab all this stuff Do -do -do. add the grid just use an element select here you can press F2 um, that will give you a better idea as to what you're selecting as well nice and once we've got everything we want selected we can actually use this color picker and just pick that and because there's no shading on this it doesn't matter whether we pick it from there or there it'll always result in the same same result um, we want this to be brass as well or, or bronze armor so I'm just going to grab both of these I'm going to select similar um, and then I'm going to grow and that should select all the nibs on all the others um, again that's something that I would go over in another video those kind of tools because they're a bit more I don't know high-end um, modeling tools um, we're actually gonna need to redo this again so you'll see me do that again in a moment because it's easier for us to select um, so right watch so for the wheels now I want to set these to like yellow or something but if we do that we're gonna undo the vert colors from before so it was kind of a bit of a misplay from me to uh, to do that first. I should have done it second, um, but at least you get to see it twice now. So similar, grow, and then come down here, color pick, pink. I also want to have a bit more control over these, so I'm going to do it there as well, and that's going to grab me all these, and that's going to let me choose a different um, color of wood. You can still mask by polygon within Painter. You don't have to rely on this. It's more of a basis just a nice little start to get you going and then um, I'm gonna grab these and even though this is gonna be wood like this yellow wood the grain of it might be different so I'm still gonna set it to a different ID you can um, as you'll see have more than one color ID assigned to a material so I won't worry too much about that and we're just gonna do the same the same for these here so I'm just gonna select dark blue like that and um, it might be a little bit too close to that just in case we change decide to change the tolerance of that so we'll do like a, we'll do like a purple color like that so um, that's looking pretty much right and um, I can't really see any issues with that we can always re re-import and rebake it if we ever want to so um, if we just object properties out of this and get rid of the vertex channel colors you'll see it hasn't actually changed the model at all but underneath we still have that data I'm just going to export selected on this and we're going to head over to our uh, our tutorials folder canon and we're going to overwrite this um, so I'm going to go over my canon high with this one hit ok hide selection on that um, I'm going to do that again I didn't realise I had the other one hidden um, you can see it went greyer there that's because we've still got the vertex channel on um, low export selected it's important to know as well um, when you're baking your high poly UVs uh, mean absolutely nothing they don't matter at all so just punch that over our um, low poly there and yeah that will uh, that will just be ready to go now while Substance Paint is launching um, I thought it'd be cool to show you guys um, we go to our high poly how we would go about um, creating floating geometry for something like this so let's say we had and um, I'm gonna use this as like a basis to start us off so if we just grab that um, copy this out let me clone this to an object here and then let's say we had something like that something like that something like that very nice um, and then Let's pivot to be center. Floating geometry might be another thing people want me to cover. I don't know. Um, like there's a nice tool up here that will let me place this now on top of stuff. So if I wanted that, let's say there, I would then just go into here and I would set the vertex color to be whatever I wanted. So let's say we wanted it to be like, I don't know. We go for like some weird sort of brown color. Um, and then we just go into here object properties vertex channel now what we would do is we would just attach that to that and then that would get baked in with the cage with the rest of it and that would still have its own 
I do. And it would uh, affect the normal in the same way it normally would. That's how you do that. Um, but we don't want that. That looks a bit ugly, so we're going to ignore that and head over to Substance Paint now. So here is Painter. Just create a new file. Select our mesh. Run over to the Canon. It should be in our game dev folder. Tutorials, Canon, Canon Low. Hit OK on that. In she comes. Very nice. And then head over to our big mesh maps. Notice there, that's the name of the material we gave it in Substance Painter. Yeah, in 3ds Max, sorry. 2K. Grab the Canon High. Head over to ID, make sure we're on vertex color selected, and press bake. Now we can preview, I don't think we can actually, um, it'll pop up here though, but I'm pretty sure the normal map and world space will knock that down a bit so we can get to see it. But I'm sure we'll get a chance to see it once, um, once the bake's done. Now I would recommend you should be doing like, um, Pretty small bake initially, and then you know, once you're happy with how it's looking, bump it up. Now, you notice the rope here is included, that's because, um, the that's like the AO and curvature data from the, the rope that we're not actually worried about for the sake of this tutorial. Um, so just ignore that, and um, the ID map shouldn't be affected by that. So, we head over to here and create a new fill layer. In fact, we might as well do this properly. Um, I know for a fact that we want three materials for this. We want steel. Here it is, steel. We want bronze. And we want wood. Grab that. The wood, we're gonna quickly color select that. Um, actually broken the thingy a bit here we might need to go and have a little look at our high poly shouldn't be an issue um it definitely won't be an issue with you your um your one at home it's probably just because i've been a bit lazy with the way i've set it up but uh yeah that's just the rope carrying through there that would all be ignored later on down the line so we just grab our wood grab that grab that um, hide that so we know what we're doing. Yeah, so this this rope isn't looking too too good, is it? Um, that's probably coming from the high poly, which is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why that's happening because actually I have an idea. Could it be because it's hidden in the UVs if we don't hide all? There it is, bang. So those of you that don't know, um, it's a nice little trouble troubleshooting trip, a troubleshooting tip for you. So sometimes these pesky little things will hide so if we what's happened here is i've been testing my id map at some point when i was making this high poly mesh and whilst doing so i had gone into my unwrap and let me just take the vert colors off here for a moment so i'd gone into my unwrap and i had selected all of id one so i had gone into here i'd pressed one i'd selected that and then i'd gone into here and then I, I was trying to do stuff in my UV1, but this was doing this was in my way. So what I did is I just grabbed this, I inverted my, um, oh no, I didn't, sorry. I just pressed that and that hides the mesh. And then when I finished, I just converted it without thinking. And then I forgot to unhide the polys. So when I come to show, when I just came to show you guys, um, what that meant was when I unhide all, we now have this pesky thing. And now my 3ds max is being a bit of a douche so let me just botch this a little bit here just delete that and um file export back over our high okay and then um notice the um i don't know if you guys noticed but you may have realized that the the white um in our id map was actually coming from the vert colors of that that's why i kind of knew that was what was going on there at first i thought it might have been curvature or normal map data but I don't know and um, this will bake fine now so if we just bake this again this white stuff will disappear that can also come from uh, 
and it'll look a lot worse actually if you forget to switch your IDs around. So you noticed up here when I first launched this Substance Painter, I shown you that it had, and there it goes then, it had a single material. I'll just press it again for you, but um, I'll open you the other one and you'll notice it has two. It'll just be easier to show you once this is finished. Save my rambling. So up here, you notice we have one material. Um, in the final project, I have two, and that's kind of what's caused a bit of confusion here. So head back over here, um, select the rest of the wood. Think that's all of it? Nope, we've got a little bit more to go. Um, this is caused by um, a bad cage, so it's not sure whether to pick that up or pick this up. That's just a case of tweaking your cage, which um, I'm sure you guys can't be asked listening to. So again, here with the bad cage, so that's just a case of, I'm not going to keep rebaking because it'll take forever, but if you get into stuff like that, um, these max and frontal distance will help fine tune that out for you. Um, go into the bronze, add a mask, that was just a right click by the way, um, press that pink, that'll all come on nicely for us there, um, go onto the steel, and grab that, grab that, and there we go. And then you can add your own details. You might be, might say you don't get the perfect bake. You might want to paint out a few of these little niggles here and there. But ultimately, that's pretty much going to sort you out. Um, and yeah, let's uh, have a quick look at one I prepared earlier. Um, and this is the example of the one that I actually used and, and put in game. So you can see there, that was a little bit tidier can see here we got the rope still and the UVs on that are a bit squashed I ended up adjusting that before export and also I got rid of the seam here so that looks okay in game um, so yeah this is the cannon you see on the you saw on the intro render so yeah you can see um, a similar thing here but one thing you may notice actually is if we go on to fill layer and we do mass with color selection we don't have any ID map ignore the rope um, that's because I used a completely different workflow to um, section this out. Even though it worked the same way, um, I personally prefer this workflow when I'm doing mid-poly workflows. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of what you're trying to do. If you guys are interested in knowing how I did this, I'd be more than happy to, to walk you through it. But for now, that's, that's how to bake with vert colours in 3ds Max and Substance Painter. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.